Hey everybody, that was the short screening put together by the Addis Video Art Festival. Right now we have a special treat for you. We have a transnational Q&A with a number of the filmmakers and their collaborators. We're all over Zoom and we're all over the world. Some folks are phoning in from the United States, from France, from Germany, from Ethiopia. Uh, it's really a, a pleasure to welcome this broad and diasporic group of, of experimental filmmakers. So the folks that we have with us today returning is Ezra Wube from the Addis Video Art Festival team. And then we also have Helena Mataferia, the filmmaker that made The Neos Flower. We have Kibram Gebramedim, the filmmaker that made Melting Jewels. We have Hodros Kifle, the filmmaker who made A Place I Call Home. We have Marta Haile and her collaborator Norgard Kruger, the filmmakers that made You Can't Eat Money. And we have Jakob Buzuna, who made Circle and Hollow. So welcome everyone. It's such a joy to be able to be in the same digital space as you. Thank you for having us. For sure. Thanks so, much. Thanks so much for having us. I'd like to start off this Q&A with uh, asking each of you to just briefly speak to your film project. Uh, anyone can start first, if you're not shy. <laughs> I guess I'll start. Um, so my project was a two channel called uh, The Newest Flower. And I made this, it's so funny to see it. I haven't seen it in so long, but I made this in 2015. Um, it was part of my thesis project while I was in graduate school. Um, and I went to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, where my family's from and Washington DC, where I was born. And I created a um, transdiscipline or transnational narrative um, based on about 40 interviews with um, Ethiopian Americans who live in either capital city. And so I was uh, really thinking about displacement, um, voluntary and involuntary migration, all the things that happen when, you know, through globalization and through our um, uprootment and how people piece together a narrative of identity. Um, and some of it is nostalgia. Some of it is um, inherited kind of um, uh, ideas about what it means to be a, a citizen of um, a certain space. So. Um, it's fun to relook at that video and kind of see um, how it means today, five years later. Jakob, would you like to go next? Yes. Um... Yeah, my video uh, I've made uh, was in 2013, and uh, that time that I had I had opportunity uh, to participate in the workshop called Wax and Gold, uh, organized by the Nes Art Village. So uh, it allowed me to to work on this video that I was already inspired the place uh, where I grown up and uh, born. Uh, so I, I was engaged with that and collaborated with the choreographers. Uh, that's it, in short. How about you, Teodros? Pardon? <clears throat> and, yeah, the next, I was just asking the next filmmaker to introduce their work. Okay. Uh, Basically, uh, my, my work is called uh, A Place I Call Home. It was called a, a Place I Call Home. So basically, it was my everyday uh, experience. Uh, when, I, when I go places, uh, uh, I see these activities, this disturbing environment. So it basically speaks about the story of historical capital city with a, a tranquil and uh, peaceful environment which becoming uh, compact and polluted in its all in its all form of uh, existence, like visually, hourly, and environmentally. So, uh, due to pollution grows and compact settlement from different parts of the country, 
So that's how uh, I can explain my 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 work. Marta and Norgard, would either of you like to introduce that piece of yours? Well, actually, it's Marta's film, so she goes first. It, it, it's our work. Uh, it's basically it's Norgard's idea that uh, put us to, to work on this on this project. So basically, it was Norgard's initiative and her her work, but we talked about it and we developed the, the work together along with other two friends of ours. But uh, me and Norga decided to do the video together uh, to eat uh, Ethiopian money in, 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 our, in my studio. So not only that, but I want Norga to explain more about the concept and why we did that. And while she was in, in Addis and the experience of uh, doing it all together as white woman and as Ethiopian woman eating eating money together in a in that setting. Okay, thanks for that. Um, I don't cons consider myself as a filmmaker actually, um, so I don't I don't like to um, somehow di directable viewers um, or give their directions to the viewers I So I do the performance, I do actions, and I don't have any messages to um, provide. It's just what I do, and everybody can take his own point of view and yeah, somehow find the um, spot where they are interested in. And um, obviously, um, I'm eating money. <laughs> and I, uh, when I visited Addis Abeba, I met Martha, and I did a presentation. And then uh, the idea came up that we, we do it somehow. And um, I was very um, impressed about the whole dialogue, because this was the first time somebody else wanted to do it. I do, of course, have um, a video already with another white woman, and we ate uh, money in Germany. And uh, I was just in the middle of going on, but I never do document my work. So um, putting this in a in a film again, and also documenting it, and um, there was a discussion about shall we edit it after that or not? And this is all up to Martha because everybody who participates in the moment I do actions can take whatever they want of it out too. So um, eating money. Um, when I, my, my first idea was um, to start with this. I, I don't know if you, of all of you are aware of that. Um, in Germany, there was quite a lot of slogans um, citing the Native American speaking of only when the last tree has fallen and the last river is polluted and the last fish has been caught and everything, you will realize that you can't eat money or something like this. And um, I'm always interested in historiography and uh, if there's any truth in it or not. And everybody knows better than anybody else if this uh, was really a speech by a um, Native American or, an, or not. But it's used everywhere as a um, common saying. And I like to prove the opposite of things. And I think in this... Um, doing the opposite thing or turning the coin, um, there is some truth in this maybe. And Kibram, if you could tell us a bit about your work. Thank you so much. Um, so it, it, it was uh, a part of a, a thesis project in 2016 that I did. Um, I think we shared it last with Martha. 
Um, and um, so basically, my work deals with memory, in particular, the memory of loss. And uh, the work or the, the, the piece, the piece was inspired by uh, three main events that I was like encountered through my environment. And one is like, uh, my dad was sick uh, at that time and he passed away through cancer. And um, um, after a year of his passing by, um, uh, he had a shop that he used to own. He was a jewelry maker. So uh, uh, we didn't afford to keep that, that shop, which he owned like more than, you know, 30 something years. So it was like kind of part of a uh, uh, um, um, uh, family member, like kind of like at the same time we kind of lost. And at the same time, uh, as you all know, like in, in that time, still I think happening now, um, uh, the city was going through under a lot of changes where the, um, you know, old houses are like thrown down um, and new uh, high rise buildings are like coming up and everything. So. Um, I was really interested on the idea of, uh, like, you know, how a person becomes a memory, and at the same time, how a space becomes a memory. And so, um, and for that, I was I was really working a lot. I like to work. Um, that's how I really experience my space, my environment. That's how I get to know the, also the, the environment. So that's how I was. Uh, um, uh, the inspiration or the work comes. Um, uh, this event, uh, yeah. So I'm wondering, it seems as though the curatorial through line is questioning questions around place and Addis Ababa specifically. And I know that a lot of these works, it was mentioned in our pre Q&A discussion, a lot of these works were made while people were either living in Addis Ababa or visiting uh, diasporically. But at this moment in time, in this Q&A, there's only one filmmaker who's presently based in Addis. So I would love to hear if anyone wanted to speak to the idea of place and how that shows up in your work or perhaps your reflections on place at this moment in time. I know a moment earlier, Helena, you mentioned uh, watching your film all these years later, just thinking through those themes you you were working with and, and questions you're asking in that work now, it kind of rings differently. So I'd love if anyone felt like talking about place. Go ahead, Martha. Oh, okay. I uh, thought you were, I thought you were about to go, yeah. <laughs> no, I was expecting you, I'm even okay. Going. Um, no, I was just thinking about like, I'm still interested in site specificity, like place and these ideas of belonging and what it means to um, kind of uh, identify with a space or a people or a group or a community. Um, but I think I needed to start, I was doing that as a student, it was my thesis work, and I, I needed to start with my own personal narrative and my personal kind of trajectory. And as an Ethiopian American, um, I felt I was going to school in Boston and I felt a little disoriented in that space um, and I needed to kind of be situated in self and grounded in self and that meant grounded in, in my family and that kind of um, history, ancestral history. I think my work since then has kind of investigated like space in different ways, like the politics of space, um, access, equity, um, you know, um, notions of uh, citizenship more broadly. Um, but I think that it's nice to start with kind of the personal narrative. And I, I mentioned, you know, some people also had talked about the personal, I think, um, and then kind of making that somebody who doesn't have your identity, how they can tap into it, right? So how can somebody who isn't Ethiopian American can, it can resonate with them because they're also in flux and search for identity. And so I think that's the problem solving in my work is when it's so specific about an identity, how can it be opened more broadly? Um, so. I mean, for for us, uh, the space really matters and also uh, doing it uh, in Addis, uh, whether we were supposed to eat Ethiopian money or e European because 100 um, bir or money is equivalent to five euro. 
So we had to negotiate between eating specific amount of money in in that particular space and uh, I mean the space in the place was, was was very important in our work because it's also locates where we were doing the the work and also having uh, two different uh, women on a on on that performance also was was part of the 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 question of also place and belonging and other other questions I guess how do you see it no guard yes of course. I was just uh, thinking about um, because it's some years ago. Um, how how did we came up with uh, or what what else ideas did we have? Um, why, how come we choose this place? How come that we decided on yeah it's gonna be the? I, I think I'm I was very very. Um, very, very strong about doing it with Dill. I remember now that uh, there was this option of doing it with Euros and um, I didn't really remember that. <laughs> but um, I, I think it's, it, it's the, the most simple thing to do, just go with the things they are surrounding you right there where you are and then this is maybe the description of what place is because it's there and there's other places but this is what you can imagine or what you have in your memories maybe but um, the very place is only where you are something about this uh, things you can evaluate maybe because of this currency thing you know what money is and they use it in other places you know this but in, in this very moment you can only use what you have and this is the moment and the place is it um, I, I wonder for Jakob in your film, the physical place in some ways is quite recognizable if someone is familiar with the city of Addis Ababa, but then also the way that the movement-based artists interact with the material, the materiality of the place. Um, I was just wondering if you could speak to that as well. Uh, just to elaborate uh, the, the what that I said before, um, uh, like the, the place like uh, Mercato, it's well known, uh, it's open market in Africa, the big market. Uh, there is different uh, type of uh, places. Uh, it's called like Tara or Berenta. So one of the place that I chose, uh, it's Bermil Tara, which is a barrel place where the people, the workers hammering the barrel for uh, like transforming the utensils for our daily life. Uh, so uh, the, the inspiration came from this specific area, particular area. Uh, so it matters the, to use the, the space matters for my work, uh, the actual place to, 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 to create this piece in collaboration. Uh, but what I found, uh, uh, what I found about this place, like uh, uh, I, ha I had like one year and a half engagement uh, in this specific area with workers in the area uh, because it's full of like um, an inspiration with the, the shape of uh, the shape of the body, the colors, the workers, everything's like come together and it's beautiful. Uh, so after uh, one, in, one and a half year engagement, uh, I had a conversation with the workers, uh, which gave me a lot of inspiration, uh, all about human beings uh, and related with the, the shape of the barrel and the hole on the top of the barrel. Uh, so I have been trying to change visually 
uh, the work by itself. And so I decided to, to use the actual place in collaboration with the choreographers. So the, the space matters. For Kibram, you mentioned the context that the animation comes out of uh, being an actual like ju ancestral jewelry shop. And I'm wondering in thinking through place for an animation, what questions you're trying to ask or answer in the work that you showed? Um, <clears throat> um, let me see if I get the, 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 the like the, um, I think the, like most of, um, for my work, I think the, the space really matters or the, the place really matters because um, uh, like I was saying, it, it was kind of almost autobiography kind of um, uh, works. And um, the, the space uh, or the, the, the place was like almost the inspiration of the, 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 the work. And uh, at the same time, so many things ha happening in the environment that was like kind of uh, influencing the works, not only me, but at the same time, I think that was like almost the the, the hot topics of almost most creative um, people at, uh, at the same time. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I answered the questions, but yeah, the, the place really, or the space really matters uh, in my works. And then, Teodros, your film, I believe is the the newest addition to the program. So I think that also was clear in in the visuals and and in the brevity, it feels very digital. And um, just the vignetting of having these images uh, kind of overlapping cities that are images that are well known to some viewers, whether it's a Jebana or or the Sini coffee cups or um, or plants, if you could speak to your choices and those objects and how they relate to to the to what they overlay, I'd love to hear a bit more about that. Uh, okay, <clears throat> uh, so uh, basically, um, the idea of place for me is that. Uh, it's a kind of <clears throat> something we we adapt when we stay on it or we stay on that specific time. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, uh, first, uh, when I st start to make this video art, uh, uh, I was going to a uh, round trip uh, to the countryside and uh, uh, when I'm traveling, uh, I have waited for almost one month, and when I get back to my uh, place, I realized that uh, my space is more uh, disturbed, or uh, in many ways, visually, hourly, and environmentally. So, <clears throat> uh, due to desynthesization, or due to uh, staying a long time at some place can uh, make us uh, uh, adapt the situation. So uh, maybe everybody is feel like it, they are living in in a good or in a tranquil environment, but the reality is different. So I like to uh, express that with this uh, uh, video material and. The way I take uh, the pictures is uh, random as, uh, uh, to that resembles the randomness of the, the, the busy streets and the crowd mass movement. Uh, so <clears throat> I also use my mobile phone because there is no need to have a, a clear picture so for me, that's how uh, I like to express 
that in, uh, the cutout uh, objects or uh, that element reminds me of the uh, tranquil, uh, cozy places. And uh, uh, for instance, uh, a traditional chair, which we call it uh, uh, and uh, that's uh, that resembles a pure, uh, steady dialogue with people. And uh, a door handle or uh, a key is as a sign of protection or safety to be uh, safe. So that's how uh, I overlaid or composed the overall structure of my, uh, my video. <clears throat> Ezra, I was wondering if you could speak a bit to the curatorial vision of the program being rooted in Addis, the festival being rooted in Addis as well. Um, yeah, basically, um, again, like as um, all, all the other artists are saying, like the, how place is important uh, because since the, the festival is happening in a city, um, so it was it was important to em embrace something about the city. Um, so um, it's, that it's, it's important that it, it creates connection to the city, um, it reflect the city at the same times um, as like international uh, video festival. It brings in um, other work from other parts of the world, but it's still creating to the connection to the uh, to the city. Um, so in a way, um, for this specific. Um, uh, curatorial team, um, it, it's, it's, it's sort of like a parallel screening program, but still has to do with what's happening in a city. Um, because um, like the, in a, the screening, uh, the program, we, uh, our, our intention, like, you know, we have like uh, half of the screening is indoors and like art centers uh, and uh, the university at the art school. And, and then we have um, the other half of the screenings are in, in public spaces. But just a way to reach out to the every, everyday person. So if you're going to bring art and outside from the art world context into the, um, the everyday space, and then the work has to sort of embrace something about the place. So it's not just um, it's going to the place and kind of taking over, uh, or it's not like interrupting the the daily discourse of the city, but instead it should be something about the city. It's part of the city. Uh, reflect something about the city at the same time it brings in, it brings in uh, whether it's more um, grounded subjects that's from the artists living there, kind of exploring their uh, deeper root connection to the place and kind of bringing more forward, uh, whether they're criticism or an inspiration or longings, um, um, aspirations of uh, just anything about their city and their connection to the city. At the same time, uh, try to bring in conversation from the same uh, quest and the same um, existential crisis happening in um, Siberia or Iran or Canada, and you know, um, kind of bringing in that kind of creating that platform of connect, connect like human connection, um, human quest. At the same time, uh, resonating to the city. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I think uh, as I said earlier, uh, first to like conceive the curatorial, t curatorial team for video art from Ethiopia. It was kind of a bit uh, problematic first, you know, because um, artists, we are citizen of, we you know, we believe artists, all artists are citizens of the world. So kind of to put it to a specific, uh, like a national context, it it's, might be like confining for the artist, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you, um, you know, you cat catalog history, you catalog information, or you catalog um, events happening, or that's how you sort of catalog, like, um, that's how you basically create this, um, like a library uh, for whether future generation or for current generation to sort of analyze. Uh, so it is, we still, it's sort of, you know, it's, it is a, a bit of um, controversy about like kind of, you know, confining artists to a specific, like a nationality, but, at the same time, there is a place, um, the people, like the, there's a culture, there is a geographical boundary, um, and that also which created, um, you know, uh, culture and ideology. And within that 
you know, within that frame, uh, we still have, you know, frame in a way like countries exist um, and places exist and then try to have the, you know, what, what's in the psyche of the society on that, on that specific region. Um, so in a way it's important to do that because it's just, you know, creating this umbrella and like, you know, again, like uh, some of the artists say, saying like Lihalina, it's like older work looking back. It's just a way of, you know, it's a way of like uh, putting it in this um, time capsule. And, you know, you can look at it, you can analyze it you can, uh, because it's important. That's how you can uh, understand how, how far society has progressed or regressed. Uh, so you need some sort of way of like kind of putting this together. Um, yeah, so that was the idea about, um, I mean, if it's a sensitive issue to, you know, try to confine artists in a specific nationalism, at the same time, it's important to show what they have and kind of process it together, you know, reflecting from the, the personal, uh, like Kavrom's like, uh, you know, like an intimate type of work to more of like a cross-cultural experience of Halina's exploration um, um, and uh, some of the place reflection by Tedros or uh, Jakob's involvement with the specific community um, and Martha's more, you know, commentary on the economics um, yeah, I think it's yeah, kind of having this uh, diversity of ideas um, and then put them together uh, helps. Yeah, it's it's interesting because Addis Ababa as a city is a, and has been a very global meeting point, and it has been an international place, but also to have a festival that in the title of the festival, it links place to a specific city instead of a country, especially in these times where there's a lot of unrest uh, within national borders, which, you know, is, it's a touchy thing. Like people want to talk about it, but don't want to talk about it because everyone is carrying different traumas around violence that gets named or not, or is witnessed or ignored. But to have a festival choose to identify with a city instead of a country is a really interesting move for me. And then in this program specifically, because it's a survey over nearly a decade, right? And I mean, one of you is in from, from Paris, Jacob, you're calling in from Paris and Kibrom and Ezra, you both in New York and Helena, you're in New York as well. And Marta, you're in Atlanta and Norgard, you're in Kessel and Tedros is the one in Addis and we're here in Treaty One, like things are just transnational in a different way because of technology. And um, yeah, I, ju I just like, I know it's, it's not a new question. I'm sure you all are a little leery of this genre of question, uh, but I think it's an important one to, to highlight and to focus, especially because these films are over such a long period of time. And, and if we think about them, Ezra, in the way that you named kind of like a library or even an archive, um, like just thinking about um, the Maranatha uh, tugging film in my backyard, like that's, it's a short experimental work that it's almost hard to place like t in, in time, <laughs> you know? Uh, but yeah, I think a screaming like this really matters because diaspora means that everyone is so far apart and, and the idea of how to think about somewhere, even if it's a cosmopolitan city, totally gets shifted and warped based on how you experience it, whether it's firsthand presently, or if it's secondhand memories of other people, or if you end up needing to be a visitor in your diasporic homeland. And I think all of that impacts the works and all of the works that we've seen. And, and for me as a viewer, who's also a programmer, but also a filmmaker, there are elements in each of your works that resonate and also don't resonate because we're all here <laughs> with this identity that's a total social construct, like, <laughs> but, but at the same time, like, there are things that link us in a, in a true way. Um, 
I could kind of go on and on about each of your films, but but we have only a limited amount of time. And I think maybe in a bit of a, a wrap up, what I will say is that it's been such a joy and pleasure. I think my favorite part of this Q&A was before we went live and everyone greeted each other. And I know some of you know each other and other of you do not, but I think just the warmth of like people checking in um, translingually and uh, different time zones, it, it was special. And that warmth was, that warmth was felt all the way out here in, in Winnipeg. Um, oh, one thing I did want to say was uh, that saying that Marta and Norgard, your film references, uh, yeah, th there's a Winnipeg based filmmaker, uh, Daryl Nipanak, who often um, works with these ideas of German appropriation of indigenous cultures and histories and does it in a really campy way at times. Uh, and yeah, I am doing a little bit of research. Wikipedia, Wiki Quotes told me that um, that quote is often attributed to a filmmaker, an indigenous filmmaker from Canada named Alanis Obamsuin. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's really interesting to think sort of transnationally and how certain phrases or sayings just sort of become ambient and and then we're not sure what is or isn't truth. And, and uh, Norgard, I really appreciated the point that you made about always being curious, but also critical of historiographies and why things are used in certain ways. And, and um, yeah, I just, I could go on and on, but I'll leave it here. I'll say that I really appreciated all of you joining us over Zoom for Windex Festival of Moving Image. And I hope that this is not the last time we get to see each other and chat um, and, uh, and take care everyone and all of your respective time zones. Thank you viewers for tuning in. And I do want to invite folks to stay tuned for our 6 p.m. Uh, very special headlining virtual concert with Beverly Glenn Copeland and Leslie Supnut. And uh, just enjoy life, enjoy this time. Pandemic times suck, but there are many that are co-current and somehow we do our best to make it through. Usually it's with pretty rad community like this. So peace everyone. Thanks for coming out and we'll Take catch care. you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye everyone. Hello everyone.